Good morning. Uh, I should say good afternoon for everyone in the United States. Uh, good, good evening for friends in the UAE. We're here today with the Honorable His Excellency Ambassador Omar Gobash uh, to talk to us about the historic events of the Abraham Accords. Uh, we hope that we have friends from Israel on the line as well, listening in. We have over 220 uh, guests registered for today's call. We, we hope to have many other important Emirati officials, businessmen in attendance uh, that, that, are, that are logging in. Dana Almarashi, the head of the Cultural Diplomacy and Affairs Office at the UAE Embassy is on the line. His Excellency Haza al Kabi, UAE Consul General in LA. His Excellency Mohammed al Mushark, the CEO of Sharjah FDI, Invest in Sharjah is on the line. Majid Jaffer, CEO of Crescent Petroleum has said he was going to join us. We also have many US officials, prominent academics, and thought leaders in attendance, including my dear friend and colleague, Ambassador Barbara Lee, former US ambassador to the UAE, Rudy De Leon and Brian Katulis, who are senior fellows at the Center for American Progress, Bernard Haeckel, director of the Institute of uh, Transregional Study of the Contemporary Middle East, North Africa, and Central Asia at Princeton University, and Kirsten Fontenrose, director of the Scowcroft Middle East Security Initiative at the Atlantic Council. Finally, Mr. Ambassador, we have representatives from the economic uh, development offices of over eight states, uh, or over eight or nine states in the United States, including Alabama, Arkansas, Indiana, Michigan, Montana, New York, Ohio, and Utah. Very, very important in the work that we do that our outreach goes across the United States and just not here in the Washington Beltway bubble. <clears throat> Mr. Ambassador, the UAE and Israel made history with the signing of the Abraham Accords yesterday and Bahrain as well. This agreement means a lot to me personally, as I've spent much of my career working with both Israel and the UAE and endeavoring to foster ties between these two important US partners. I've really been impressed by the impact this agreement has already had on business ties in the region, as well as on the mutual understanding shared between these two forward-looking states. But today, <clears throat> excuse me, we're delighted to speak with one of the leading proponents for mutual understanding and tolerance in the Middle East, His Excellency, Ambassador Omar Gobash. Ambassador Gobash is a true statesman and a scholar. He's currently serving as Assistant Minister for Culture and Public Diplomacy. Previously, he served as UAE Ambassador to France and UAE Ambassador to Russia, two critical posts for UAE's foreign diplomacy. He has been a leading proponent of religious tolerance and has played a major role in the UAE's work to welcome people of all faiths. Ambassador Gobash is in Washington, D.C. this week as part of the official UAE delegation to the signing of the Abraham Accords. Now, Ambassador Gobash is known, known to many, many, many people around the world for a book that I've read, is on my coffee table actually, called Letters to a Young Muslim in 2017. In that book to his son Saif and Abdullah, he gave a very thoughtful, heart, uh, heartfelt account of Islam's role in the world today and how young Muslims might look to their future uh, and, and reconcile uh, their views of Islam with, with Islam, Islam's role in the world as we see it. Ambassador Gobash just told me before we started that he recently, uh, he and his wife, had two twin girls, Sarah and Noor. And I've asked him when he is writing his book, uh, Letters to Young Muslim Women, and uh, he'll, maybe he will talk about that a little bit with us. Ambassador Gobash, over to you to make an opening statement and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A. Thank you so much for being with us today and welcome. Mabruk. Thank you very much, Danny. Um, uh, I have to admit, I haven't heard anything that you've said uh, from the, the, the second that you described me as honorable. I, I love that. Nobody's <laughs> ever done that before. So uh, I'm, I'm still sort of, my, my body is reverberating with uh, that news. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to have it uh, made, made official. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really great to be able to uh, uh, speak to you guys today, to address you today. Uh, and it's really a wonderful time to be in DC. And the, uh, uh, if I can just talk a little about the, the event that took place yesterday and uh, how I feel about it. Uh, I just wanted one quick point yeah, that sure. I failed to make. This is all on the record. 
Uh, yeah. and, and we will be, we are recording it. And if folks have any questions to post to the ambassador, please put them in the chat function and I'll be happy to do that. I'm so sorry for interrupting. Please go ahead. No, you clearly, you sensed that I was going to say things that were completely inappropriate uh, and, and warn me in advance. I'm actually going to now shorten my uh, comments to three minutes <laughs> instead of the full 45 that I was expecting to. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> uh, just, I, I just wanted to put a, a, a little kind of meaning for, um, uh, around the events of yesterday. Um, there are a lot of different people who are looking at the uh, peace agreement uh, between the, the Emirates and, and Israel uh, as some kind of deal, some kind of political maneuver as, uh, with you know, kind of a short-term perspective, whether it's defense or security or you know, sort of re-election hopes. And the reality is that it's actually um, something much, much broader, much grander, and much more ambitious than that. And uh, I want I want to, to really clarify that this is um, a move towards peace with Israel is something that is very much in accordance with the kind of moral ethical DNA of of the Emirates, uh, going back to the founders of the Emirates, um, particular to to the founder Sheikh Zayed, um, who uh, who was the leader of Abu Dhabi and then uh, became president. And it's it's something that um, it, for for me as an Emirati who was born in the year of uh, the Union. 1971, to be able to see um, the values of the founder being translated into the 21st century, into global politics, uh, and to know that um, his spirit lives on in, in the conduct of his, his children, in the conduct of his sons, uh, and, in, and in the conduct of you know, the, the, the people of the Emirates. So it's really, a, a, it was a very, very moving a moment yesterday to see our foreign minister, Sheikh Abdullah, uh, signing, uh, signing the agreement and, and doing so with such a, a confidence, uh, a self-confidence and, and assuredness. Um, and to be able to listen to the words that he um, uh, uttered there uh, in, his, in his speech and to know that we are being led by such brave uh, and, and wise and, and thoughtful leaders. Thank you, sir. Um, tell us a little bit more uh, about the impetus behind the deal. Uh, obviously, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, Ambassador Alateba's uh, uh, op-ed in Yedi Aranot in, in, in Israel uh, was a turning point for sure. But yeah. share a few more words about uh, your leadership uh, and, and helping promote religious tolerance and how it led to this moment? Well, I, I myself, am, I'm, I'm trying to sort of um, uh, find out from different sources, how far back does this go? Because, you know, these, these ideas don't pop up suddenly you know, over the summer and, and all of a sudden reach a state where um, we're signing a major peace agreement and, and really changing the dynamics of the entire Middle East as a result. Um, so I think there are a number of different trends. I mean, there is the, the, the potentially the geopolitical trend, uh, um, but there's also very much um, the leadership of the Emirates' vision for the Middle East, uh, and that you know ties into what happened uh, around the um, the so-called Arab Spring, uh, and then the rise of uh, vicious groups like ISIS, um, uh, let, let alone Al Qaeda. Uh, and the fact that you know we, uh, as as the Emirates and through our leadership, have been fighting against that kind of um, very brutal, primitive uh, vision for for the Middle East, uh, it it has taken time. Uh, certainly, it has taken time. Um, uh, but but we've reached a stage where we can confidently say that we not only speak about our values, but we actually execute all our values, that we actually demonstrate those values in practice, and that we are institutionalizing those values. So. Um, you know, specifically the, the, in, in terms of institutionalization, um, we've, we, we host um, a conference, an annual conference, um, which is also an ongoing kind of conference. Um, it's a peace within Muslim societies. Um, and that is actually very, very important. Uh, the idea that we need to be communicating with other Muslims about where we really stand on uh, our own values. And there is a distortion that has taken place um, over the, over the last few decades, um, partly um, po political distortion and partly um, kind of ideological distortion uh, represented by you know, groups like the Muslim Brotherhood, groups like uh, Al-Qaeda and, and, and ISIS um, that have focused in on a very narrow interpretation of uh, our faith. Um, and it's very um, 
there, there is a recurring theme in uh, conversations with uh, my leaders, and that is that Islam has been hijacked by these groups. And the reality is that in, in, in taking Islam back, you really need to free it from those constraints. And you free it by presenting a different version of a different form of, uh, of, of uh, a, a different expression. That's what I mean, a different expression of Islam. And so um, this massive focus that we've had over the last few years on openness and tolerance and acceptance has translated into um, visiting delegations from the Jewish communities of the United States um, every year to Abu Dhabi in particular. Uh, I, I brought um, the chief rabbi of Moscow to Abu Dhabi to meet with uh, the leadership um, a few years ago, and, and, and that was absolutely wonderful. And so there's this, you know, growing sense of acceptance and and really facing the the, the rhetoric, uh, specifically the rhetoric of of anti-Semitism. Uh, and I think there's a sense in which uh, many many people in the Emirates um, recognize that this kind of uh, knee-jerk, uh, indoctrinated uh, anti-Semitism has a negative moral effect on us. Um, and it, it, it kind of, um, we needed to tackle that uh, through openness and religious tolerance in order to move forward morally ourselves. So I think that's, that's another aspect that needs to be taken in, into account. As a result, um, I think you know, and, and, and um, um, the Emirates of Abu Dhabi is uh, uh, building a, a, mosque, a, muse, um, a mosque, a church, and, and a synagogue on a, a one platform uh, in order to demonstrate that actually we can we can uh, accept uh, those of other faiths and we can almost worship with them as well, and that is um, again you know kind of a, another massive um, uh, structural change in in mentality uh, which needs to be taken into account. Mr. Ambassador, I really appreciate you mentioning that. That that came as part of or in the in the run up to that announcement of the the, the Pope's visit to the UAE. Yeah. And, and again, say a few words about that and, and, the, and the impact that that has had uh, on the Gulf region, on the UAE, in this, this notion of tolerance and acceptance for the future, please. Well, uh, you know, the uh, Emirates uh, have, have been very open and accepting of other faiths, but perhaps not in such a public manner. So um, even before the Pope's visit, there were, I think, 70 operating uh, churches uh, in the Emirates. But again, not a massive public display. Uh, not, you know, necessarily um, having any attention drawn to, to, to that. Um, there is this narrative that says that, you know, um, uh, other religions should not be represented on the Arabian Peninsula because it is the birthplace of Islam. And I think what we were doing and uh, leadership was doing was saying, uh, we are confident in our religion, we are confident of our religion, we are not um, threatened by uh, those who differ from us in religion. Uh, and in fact, we are we are so comfortable that we will uh, we will invite the leader of uh, the Catholic Church, um, and and we will allow him or encourage him almost to um, host a, a, a mass in in Abu Dhabi. And that's exactly what happened. And I was fortunate enough to attend um, that event, and it was it was absolutely amazing. It was it, to be honest, he, he came across as a bit of a rock star. So um, <laughs> there was there was a lot of music. It was a, you know. It was in a stadium, so they were, they, people were doing the, that, that wave movement. So, um, it, was, it was a great day. And again, that says that we are, we are proud uh, of our faith and we are proud of our values. And those values don't, don't force us to choose sides. Um, we can all coexist, is what, the, what, the, what leadership was saying and, and the message that we as the people of the Emirates uh, understood from that event. So even before the announcement of the Abrahamic House, which is going to be in Abu Dhabi on Sadiat Island, as I understand, yeah. um, with, the, with the synagogue, the church, and, and the mosque, uh, the, the, there was a, a, a villa in Dubai that was, uh, in fact, a de, facto, a de facto synagogue that's been operating for many years. Yeah. And now there's going to be more synagogues and more places of worship for the Jewish faith in the UAE. Uh, talk mm -hmm. about how that that impact of that aspect of this a little bit as well, please. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, I am, if I'm not mistaken, the, that synagogue is actually on the same block that uh, I built my little house on. So, you know, <laughs> I thought, so I, um, one of the rabbis, because uh, there are multiple rabbis, I understand now, but one of the rabbis is, uh, is, is quite a good friend of mine, and he dropped by my house, and I offered my, uh, uh, my, my copy of the, uh, my 72 volumes of the Talmud to, for, 
uh, their use if they need it. Uh, <laughs> He's only keep it in mind, just in case, emergency situation. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we see each other all the time. We're in touch with each other all the time. And it's so important uh, as we make this transition from a, a world of rhetoric and, and kind of traditional uh, indoctrination to a world in which all of a sudden the biggest taboo that I can, I can imagine, the recognition of Israel, um, has now happened, and all of a sudden, people, are, are, yeah, Emiratis, are looking around and saying, "You know, I, I didn't have an issue anyway, but this is this is remarkable." And, and so, it's very it's very exciting to see some of the reactions of of, of um, young people, even older people, people who are intending to go to Israel, uh, others who boast that oh, I've been to Israel already twice, and you're like, "Really?" Well, <laughs> so it, it kind of talks to us. Sorry, maybe I'm, I'm I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but it kind of talks to us about the power of of um, indoctrination and perhaps its weakness. That people can be told what to think, but they will think what they believe, what they what they what they want, and what they see. And specifically in this context, it's amazing how quickly um, people have changed their views and are now openly saying, you know, I want to go, I want to learn, I want to discover. So that's very very exciting. Ambassador, I usually save this question for last, but because you talked about the UAE's youth and Israel's youth, I'm going to ask it now and, and, and yeah. maybe even again a little bit in, in conjunct, conjunction with your book. But how do you talk to your kids right now today? Uh, when you called them yesterday after the event, when you called them before the event yesterday, what yeah. do you say to them? How do you talk to them about it? Uh, well, actually, I... I... I, I've always been, um, ever since I was 12, I've always been in favor um, uh, of peace with Israel and, and of tolerance. Uh, tolerance in, a, in, a, in kind of a grander sense, right? Um, of communication, dialogue, and interaction, and respect, and respect for the dignity of, of others. And so um, I, I did face an issue with one of my sons when he was quite young. He'd been uh, told something at school uh, about the Jews. And uh, I, I had to be honest with him. I sat him down and I said, you can't, you can't say things like that. And you cannot, um, you have to be careful when you're told uh, to blame an entire nation uh, 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 blindly. An entire and, people, and, yeah. An entire people. And I, I said that, you know, what I've always thought is you, you, you have to look at people's responsibility. Each individual is responsible for his or her actions. And I tried to convey to him that group blame is, 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 is a dishonor to you. You need to be able to look at every single individual and say, you know, I agree, I disagree, I I, I, I don't approve or I approve. You cannot say the entire people. And, you know, he was a bit taken aback, but um, this, is, this is part of the world in which we live, that there, is, there are prejudices, there are biases, and there are people who will uh, want to spread that, that prejudice and that bias. And so um, I found myself in a little uh, kind of tug of war with him, but um, when he heard that uh, we were signing a peace deal with Israel, and he heard that I was going to be uh, going to the White House uh, uh, for the ceremony, he sent me a message and said, Baba, your dream is coming true. And he was happy for me and he was happy in himself. Um, and we spoke about it and, and you know, he was completely on, on board with it. So that's, that's something that I find really remarkable. I don't know how other parents are gonna, gonna be dealing with this, um, but I hope that uh, they can see that the, the Emirates, it does, takes bold action in, in, in the desire to improve the lot of people everywhere. It is not purely, you know, this is in the interests of the Emirates. It is in the interests of the Emirates, but the Emirates in its DNA wants to make the world a better place. And that's what we, we need to really remember, that this is not a one-off deal uh, that, that will be forgotten in a few weeks. It's, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's another um, building block in a, a vision of peace, prosperity, and, and well-being for the entire region and for the Muslim people as well, for the Muslim faith. So, Mr. Ambassador, I'm just going to pivot to a question here from the audience, from uh, William Ruff. Uh, he asks, in that regard, where does the Abrahamic Accord leave the future of the Palestinians uh, in UAE policy? Uh, we have clarified repeatedly uh, that our um, uh, our commitment to the Palestinian people is no weaker today uh, uh, than, than it was yesterday. It is as strong as it was uh, from the foundation of the Emirates and from prior to the foundation of the Emirates. Um, we are 
we have reassured uh, the large uh, uh, and very productive uh, Palestinian community of the Emirates that we stand by uh, the Palestinian people and we stand for justice for the Palestinian people. Uh, this is a, well, our, our um, peace with Israel is a reflection of, of changing um, social, economic, and cultural um, uh, uh, scene in, in not just the Emirates, but the Gulf states. Uh, and I've tried to kind of point this out um, in, in, in the last few days, but the Emirates as a country and as an economy and as a society has moved um, a, a tremendous distance, even in the last 20 years. But if you go back to 71, it's, it's night and day. Um, and perhaps there are certain, certain people in the leadership of Palestine who don't quite understand the changing dynamics and the changing imperatives of uh, the Gulf states. So uh, we think that we will be able to do great uh, justice to the cause of the Palestinians um, with the peace deal. So um, we would like to reassure them that the, this is not a turning away from the Palestinian issue or the Palestinian cause and that we will continue to make, make our, our voice heard on this issue. Thank you so much. I'm gonna pivot a little bit uh, mm -hmm. here, and we'll come back to some of this maybe a little bit later. But um, th I'd like to ask you a little bit about, uh, about some of the, the business aspects of this. Uh, and, and even before the announcement of the accord, we saw Israeli and Emirati companies collaborate in the healthcare space particularly surrounding COVID-19 pandemic, which we should talk about a little bit. Yeah. And in your opinion, did the pandemic play any role in bringing the countries closer together and in the finalization of this deal between U the UAE and Israel now today? You know, I can't, I can't help thinking that it must have played a, a certain role. Um, because if you look uh, at the start of the pandemic, uh, the prime minister of the United Arab Emirates, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Marashi, um, made a very clear announcement to the UAE people uh, that there would be radical changes within government. And the radical change that took place within government is the, the um, realignment of uh, government departments to focus on economic development. And I think there are actually four different ministers and ministers of state who are responsible for different aspects of the economy. Uh, and, a, and a very, very big focus, um, a refocus on uh, science and education, uh, as well as things like food security. Food security, which was uh, an important uh, portfolio, but not necessarily a central one, has now become central. And um, if you look around the world, you will find that there is one place in particular that has a tremendous amount to offer in all of those different uh, fields. Uh, and so I can't help thinking that there must have been some, finally, in Israel's importance as a technological center and, and an educational center and a cultural center, um, it, it was crystallized in the minds of, of leadership. And, you know, um, COVID forced us to make changes across a wide range of, of matters. Um, and it just seems appropriate that we would also look at this kind of geopolitical change as well understand. Um, any other national goals that you can think of or national objectives that contributing to the signing of the accord at this moment, at this time? I mean, you uh, seem to have covered it really well, but I'm just curious if there's anything else that you can think of. Look, I mean, you know, the, 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 the annexation issue um, uh, became a very, very hot, hot topic in, in the Israeli elections. And the reality is, if we were heading towards peace with Israel, that annexation would have set that back many, many, many years. It, it, it would have been a game changer. Um, and, you know, I think what we did was take a, a, a real, a serious look at the rhetoric around uh, annexation within um, the Israeli uh, um, political scene. And we came to a judgment that it was enough of a threat um, that uh, we, would, we would need to, to make moves before uh, any, any such attempt were made uh, rather than after. So, um, you know, we still believe that annexation is off the table and should be off the table. Uh, and we believe that, you know, the Palestinians uh, have to be given an opportunity uh, to come back to the table to negotiate uh, a two-state solution. Uh, and we believe that, you know, we have done a tremendous service in, in that sense uh, by, by putting it off the table. Thank you, sir. And, and, it's, and it's really great to hear you say that you're confident that, that this, this will hold this this no annexation commitment will hold. Uh, really appreciate your, your commitment to that, uh, that understanding. 
regarding a, a little bit more again about business, um, yeah. you, know, you know, the, the flight that came from Israel to some weeks ago uh, to the UAE uh, with, the, with Jared Kushner and other yeah. American diplomats and, and officials and then the Israeli delegation flew over, the, flew over Saudi airspace. When, yeah. when, when will, when will uh, Israeli flights start to, direct flights start to the UAE on a regular basis and the same reciprocal UAE flights to the UAE? Do you have any sense? Uh, you know, it, it's up to um, bureaucrats in places like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, to, get, <laughs> to get back to capital and work on these agreements. Now, wait a second. You're in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, th I think we're taking things one step at a time. And uh, everybody's mind uh, was focused on signing the agreement and, and sure. having that run smoothly. And, you know, that happened yesterday. And, and you know, it's... Uh, we're all kind of a, a, a bit shell shocked as well that it, it's actually happened. It's uh, there's a touch of um, of the sur surreal about it, um, but you I, know I, people will I, get to work soon. I understand, but things are moving so fast. I think DP yeah. World announced yesterday a new agreement with Israel Ports. The banks uh, in both yeah. countries are announcing new, new, new financing and banking agreements. I mean, yeah. things are moving really, really quickly, and I think they will move quickly. How yeah, do you? you go you, ahead. You, if I can say, you've just you've just talked about the private sector. The private sector can move very very fast, but we bureaucrats right. we move at our own pace. Well, sir, twenty I served twenty years in government, <laughs> and now fifteen or so years in the private sector. And and uh, you, you in spades, I agree with what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, broadly affecting the rest of the region, uh, how do you see the deal? Uh, I mean, Bahrain followed suit. Um, yeah. And was that the and, and that's why we we made it plural and called it the Abraham Accords yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in normalizing ties with Israel. Um, first, do you see any other countries coming quickly to the table uh, to do the same? And then, how do you think? Uh, what's the impact more broadly in the regional political environment for the for the near to medium term? Yeah, uh, quite exciting. Uh, I, you know, we're we're all thinking out loud. Uh, without necessarily having any clear idea of what's going to happen. I mean, I, I think it, uh, the peace deal uh, with Israel was kept under wraps and uh, so brilliantly by you know, all, all parties um, that nobody's really had time to think about the long-term consequences. I mean, uh, apart from uh, those who were involved perhaps in the decision-making around. Uh, and so I think um, you know, a lot of people in the ministry, a lot of people in government are now uh, asking that question, what, what, what will this lead to? I mean, okay, at the, at the bilateral level, it'll, it'll lead to a lot of deals, it'll lead to a lot of tourism, both ways, I'm absolutely certain. Uh, and, you know, in terms of um, uh, scientific, technical, and educational cooperation, there's going to be a real, uh, a real push, uh, definitely from the Emirati side. Um, there's going to be a big you know, sort of connection taking place between youth. Um, and I, I can say that we're actually working on this with the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a couple, um, their, their Department of Public Diplomacy, as well as a, a couple of non-governmental organizations uh, in Israel on connecting youth and, and seeing how that can roll out. Um, the other thing is, I think, in the um, kind of the, 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 the public sphere in, in or public media in the Arab world is now looking at this um, deal and there's, there's a lot of out-of-the-box thinking and there's a lot of criticism as well um, but there's a lot finally um, people can come out of the woodwork and actually speak about what it might mean um, and I think it'll, it'll take time but uh, there'll, there'll be there will be increasing interest and increasing uh, increasingly vocal um, uh, parts of, of the media that, it, that will push for uh, greater, greater cooperation with Israel one way or another I don't think, I, I can't name any countries, um, but you know, I think there's a logical list of countries that are more um, inclined to either making official, unofficial relations or you know, um, uh, uh, starting them from scratch. Um, but it, the most important thing is that the taboo has been broken. Right. Um, and the idea that many of the, the so-called frontline states had, that they would have the relationship with Israel uh, even if at arm's length, and they would mediate if necessary between, um, you know, other states, further states, Gulf states, and North African states. And I think what we've said is we uh, are not a frontline state with Israel, uh, and we will exercise our sovereignty, our agency, in our own interests, uh, without giving up on Arab or Islamic causes. But we will do so um, because it's good for us in in the, in, in the first. 
there will be other states that will also say, hey, we are just as sovereign as the UAE. Why right. can't we do the same? Sir, you mentioned the word taboo. And in what you do at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, with regard to cultural affairs is to hopefully uh, break down taboos, uh, create a better understanding and mutual respect. Can you talk a little bit about what what you're planning or what you're thinking about in that regard with, re with regard to cultural exchanges between Israel and the UAE going forward? Uh, Liz turnick Cedar from the Smithsonian Institution is on the line and she, she specifically was, was curious uh, in asking what sorts of things might be, it might be on, the, on the margins of the agreement going forward in the cult with regard to the cultural account, if you will. Sure. Um, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal something that I've never revealed before, but uh, I, uh, on Instagram, I follow a few dance companies in Israel, uh, very, very exotic contemporary dance. Um, so it'd be very entertaining to have uh, <laughs> uh, some of those dance groups come over. Um, the, there, there's going to be a tremendous amount, I think. Um, there's, there's a lot of curiosity um, on the Emirati side, and I'm sure on the, on the Israeli side as well. Uh, one of the things that a um, few people know is that some of the art galleries in Dubai um, have purchases uh, of their art from Israel. Um, and, you know, that uh, now can, I suppose, come out into the open. Um, so there has, there has been an interest um, that, uh, in, in, in that sphere. Um, we have a very, uh, very, very active uh, cultural sector. We've got um, um, very large um, investments in, in culture. And we have a superb ministry of, of culture and, and uh, led by Her Excellency Noor al Um She's going she's gonna to take this up and, and, and run with it. Uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you know, we have a, a small office focused on culture and public diplomacy. Um, and we will do what we can to uh, bring uh, Israel to the Emirates uh, in the sense of, you know, the, uh, the, the different kinds of artistic um, uh, endeavors that, that, that are, are there. Um, and I think, you know, it'll, there'll, there'll be a lot of interesting kind of coordination in the literary sphere as well. Translations perhaps of works of literature from Arabic into Hebrew and vice versa. I think that's gonna be fascinating. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, when I served in Israel uh, in, in uh, the late, uh, you know, I should say the early 90s, was the time when all the Russian emigres came, uh, the mm. mass wave of Russian emigres to, to Israel. And they brought with them some of the most talented uh, musicians in particular. Yeah. Uh, and the symphonies and the, or the symphony orchestras in Israel today uh, are populated with just amazing, amazing artists. So I hope you'll think about some exchanges with regard to music. Uh, in, oh, uh, absolutely. In, in first and foremost, because it, it's just, very, very rich, very, very rich, uh, for sure. Um, Absolutely, yeah. uh, any, anything else, uh, uh, you know, anything else more focused on the, the educational aspect of the cultural exchanges in trying to uh, break down the, some of these taboos and, 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 and win hearts and minds uh, broadly in yeah. both countries? Well, I think, yeah, it's, it's to break down the stereotypes. Uh, and, you know, there, there are stereotypes, I'm sure, on both sides. And what we'll want to do is we'll want to reach out to those who have the most rigid of, of stereotypes and, and really just present to them the opportunity to see what we are as Emiratis. Uh, and hopefully on our side to, 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 to demonstrate that Israel is a, a, a very diverse place, a multicultural place, um, and you know, to humanize um, you know, e each other. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, organizing student exchanges um, between, between Israel and the Emirates. There's a lot of interest in that. And uh, again, there are a ton of students who would like to actually study in Israel from the Emirates. Um, we should you know, really organize a, a kind of a platform for educational um, establishments to, to um, um, put forward their, their propositions. Um, and, and again, language. There is a deep fascination with, with Hebrew and a whole bunch of kids want to go there and study Hebrew. So I think these are things that we in the ministry need to focus on and we need to make sure that this really is um, part of a kind of a package to enforce the people to people piece, uh, which has um, evaded uh, some of the previous uh, peacemakers. Um, this is again and again, I have to say and repeat that it is not a piece between um, kind of uh, deal makers. It is, it is a piece that we see as being warm 
uh, and, a, and a reflection of, of Emirati hospitality and generosity of spirit. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a few questions here from the audience that I'd like sure. to turn to, and three of them uh, deal immediately again in the broader region. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a very dear friend, Dr. Elias Saya, who uh, in Abu Dhabi, is a Lebanese American who's lived in the UAE for 50 years. And his question is, as, as, as people who live in the UAE, who come from other parts of the region and, do bus and are, now want to do business with Israel, how are they going to be protected when they visit their village in Lebanon uh, from enemies of peace? Um, how, how, how will you and the Israelis, I suppose he's asking, work together to ensure uh, the safety of things like that? I'm just going to package these three questions together. And then David Wolf asks uh, if you could comment on the, on the aspect of Abu Dhabi and Riyadh with regard to the agreement and, and the possibility of Riyadh entering into a similar deal with, with, uh, with Israel sometime in the future. And Brandon Ramsey asks about uh, Iran and, and where does this leave your relationship with Iran? Uh, where does it leave the Gulf's relationship with Iran as a result of this uh, historic agreement? Those three sort of regional questions, you can sort of come at them any way you want. Uh, great, I'll, I'll come at them by evading them completely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud to say that this is outside my scope of cultural and public diplomacy. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I'll give it a shot. Um, okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how, I can, how long I can evade them for. Um, safety, uh, unfortunately, violence is everywhere. Um, and, and that's part of what we're trying to, uh, trying to tackle. Um, you know, people, people can't be blamed for uh, the decisions of, of you know, leaders or, or uh, and you know, I, there, there's even a violence in, in sort of lesser forms where a friends have decided that they no longer want to be your friend because you approve or you are uh, part of a, a government that does this uh, or that you come out and, and, like I do and speak in, in, in favor of these, uh, the, the, the deal. So there's, a, there's going to be a lot of changing um, kind of relationships as a result. Um, I, I will say that it's, it's quite interesting that I've received a number of messages from Palestinian Israeli businessmen um, who want to now um, play the role of uh, middleman in our relationship. And, and I find that, that fascinating. So it's a lot of stuff happening. Um, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, um, we took our decision uh, as a sovereign decision, um, one that was in our interest. Um, the only thing I can say is that you know, people can speculate as to whether the same structural um, uh, factors that um, affected our decision will affect those of our neighbors as well. Um, but I, I, there's nothing uh, official or unofficial that I can say on that subject. Uh, in Iran, um, this is um, important to state that this is not a decision uh, that we took with Iran in mind. Uh, it was um, much more a, a decision that was in accordance with the values that we would like to promote within um, not only the Emirates, but the wider region, which is openness, tolerance, communication, and dialogue, um, and to continue to focus on the ability uh, to disagree uh, while um, continue pursuing the uh, relationships. Sheikh Abdullah and also Dr. Anwar Gargash have both have reiterated that point over and over and over again with regard to the Iranians. Um, Bernard Haeckel, though, asks, how do you see the spoilers trying to reverse this process, reverse this progress? And he mentions Iran, Turkey, and Hamas in particular. And what steps are you taking to make sure that they don't succeed? Convincing more Arab countries to follow your lead would be helpful. Uh, and if so, which ones, we've already discussed this, that you're not going to answer, which ones do you think will do so? I'll just say, Bernard, uh, my dear friend, uh, Ambassador Dennis Ross has said that he thinks uh, Sudan and um, Oman will be next, closely followed by Morocco. Now, that's Ambassador Ross's assessment. That's not uh, Ambassador Gobash's statement in any way. But, but to the point about the spoilers, Ambassador Gobash, anything you want to say about how you're going to try to protect against that? Uh, the, the spoilers haven't really changed their tune in decades, um, and the, the, the mechanisms they use are uh, fairly basic, um, violence, um, uh, perhaps some, uh, some painful rhetoric, but uh, uh, we're just going to have to stick with our, our values and our beliefs, and we, I think the most important thing that we can do is to make sure that uh, we continually work at the relationship of peace. 
Um, e, and, and we need to be a little aware also of the, um, the dynamic, dynamic um, political uh, scene in, in Israel and not take things um, at, at face value. Um, so we need to be a little more sensitive as to what's going on and how people discuss uh, issues in Israel and continue to focus on the aspect of people-to-people -people communication. So I'm um, not worried about the naysayers, not worried about um, you know, the spoilers. There's, there's, a, there's a limit to what they can do. And in fact, what they do in the end is, is, is um, uh, diminish their own standing and reputation globally, if that's what they, uh, they want to do. Thank you, sir. Let's bring it full circle back to the United States, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. The um, Ambassador Alateba and the UAE government's focus uh, public diplomacy focus in the U.S. for quite some time has been to try to highlight uh, our, the common values that our two countries share. Mm -hmm. uh, values change. Values are uh, always under attack. Values are always being celebrated, but they evolve and change over time. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how the, the, the mutual values that you see between our two countries um, and, and how this agreement is going to uh, help shape them going forward? Uh, you know, it's it's wonderful to know that um, we were able to reach this uh, peace agreement uh, with the assistance and under the uh, leadership of the United States. So, uh, and it was wonderful to, to see the president of the United States actually signing alongside um, uh, the, our foreign minister and the prime minister of, of Israel. So, um, we're very grateful for that um, leadership and we're very grateful for um, the role that the United States plays um, in, in our relationship, but, but more broadly in, in, in the region. So um, that's, that's something that we need to be aware of. Um, our ambassador here, um, ha Yusuf Al-Ateba, has done an exemplary job in demonstrating the commonality of, of values that we have uh, with the United States. And, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's something that we also, as you know, uh, in, in the Business Council, it's something that you, you need to keep um, reaffirming, uh, demonstrating through action and through uh, interaction. And so I think uh, we're, we're on to a, a good next phase in, in the relationship. Does that mean we can, once, especially once we get past some of the COVID travel restrictions, we can count on seeing you in the United States more to be a brand ambassador, uh, traveling around, helping uh, uh, talk about those common and shared values that we both have? Both our I like that. Brand ambassador, I'm, I'm in. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> a, new a new title for you today, uh, brand <laughs> ambassador on it for, for our two countries. No, I mean, it's, it's really important that uh, this, this agreement is between you, it's between the UAE and Israel, but there is a U.S. component to it. Um, there is a U.S., if I could say, be so bold as to say, a guarantee uh, to it in some ways, a, a guarantee that I am very confident that's going to transcend hmm. uh, change in administration in in, in two months or a change in administration in, in four years and, and two months, whenever it is, it's, it, I think this, this agreement uh, and, and what it represents, uh, it, it will transcend and, and, and is guaranteed by the United States uh, for a long time to come. And I think that's partly in recognition of, of many of the values that we do share together today. Uh, mm -hmm. Finding peace, finding security, finding a future for our youth, uh, and acceptance of our uh, and tolerance. Uh, and anything more you want to say on that? I'd really, we'd really appreciate hearing about that. Yeah, I, I, there's. Um, I, I think actually, for for Americans in general, uh, of whatever political color, there should be recognition that this is a remarkable change, a remarkable um, event in in the trajectory of the Middle East, and in a way. Uh, I think you cannot underestimate uh, the profundity of this, this move. Um, now, it'll be up to us in the Emirates and, um, and the Israelis to make sure that um, the peace agreement doesn't run out of steam or uh, people don't run out of enthusiasm. There are going to be people who are ready to push uh, when things don't look good. But this is, this is peace um, a, for, for the long run, for, forever. Um, we need to make sure that we build on that and we demonstrate um, the, um, the value of that peace to those, the naysayers and to those who, um, who are, un are not interested in peace. Um, so we thank the United States, we thank the administration and the president for his, um, uh, his remarkable um, 
shepherding of, of this uh, relationship. And we really look forward to pushing it uh, to the next stage. Excellent. Uh, a dear friend uh, from Houston, Ellen Goldberg, just wants to make the point. Uh, she runs the Houston Abu Dhabi Sister City Association. And with all of our economic business associations uh, and partners that are on the line, she just wants to make the point that they stand ready. Uh, we all stand ready, sir, uh, to do what we can uh, in, in, in helping promote and move this along even faster. So I just Thank want to so give, that, give that shout out to Ellen as well. Um, Thank you. I want to I want to sort of bring this to a close, if I may, and and come back to we started talking at the very beginning a little bit about your book, uh, Letters to a Young Muslim in 2017, uh, when it was published. This was a seminal, seminal book. Uh, uh, the importance of it, I can't under I can't I can't say enough about how important this book was for for Arab youth uh, to think about uh, uh, their future. Um, it's now, we, we're now with this agreement, quite frankly, in the rearview mirror having been signed yesterday. How would you describe your hopes for the future of, of your country and the region? If you were going to write this book again today, uh, and you were going to sit down with your sons, and I know your two daughters are, you know, just not even two yet, the twins, but if you were going to think about writing this book in, in the next year or so and, uh, and have a second version of it come out, what would you change? What would you say differently? What would you highlight differently uh, this time around, yes. given where we are today? Hmm. I think um, the Peace with Israel uh, demonstrates a recognition, and it's, and it's a reflection of where leadership is, uh, recognizing that there are young people who have tremendous aspirations, aspirations that can only be achieved within a context of peace. So I'd say that um, uh, this is a recognition that Arab youth is not um, is not ammunition in an ideological war. Is not expendable, but actually needs to be nurtured and respected and brought not, into. And, and neither is Israeli youth. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and that we need to respect the fact that these children need to express themselves, to to develop themselves, uh, to demonstrate their. Um, full potential, and it's only peace that is going to be allow, uh, that will allow for that to happen. And yeah, you know, again, they, they say peace, peace is um, some, well. I think the, the the saying is a piece of the brave. Uh, it is actually a very brave uh, step to take to make peace. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's something that we need to 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 really make sure that our kids understand that this is an opportunity the opportunity of a, of a of a lifetime and it is recognition that we need to build together rather than fight sir i think that's a very positive comment and, and statement to end on do you have anything else you'd like to say uh, before i bring it to a close we're almost at the hour and i want to be respectful of your time no you're you're fantastic this has been a, a really uh, wonderful uh, opportunity um for me to you know even think on my feet uh, so thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, and, I, and I hope um, uh, that group gathered at the Emirates Embassy in, in DC um, approves of what I said today. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, thank you. Uh, we, we are watching the news carefully for the announcement of the, uh, and the appointment of, of the UAE's new ambassador to Israel. Uh, and um, uh, one way or another, uh, Ambassador Gobash, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of you uh, here in the United States and the UAE. Thank you thank very, you. very much for your time today. Uh, Mabruk again, oh, and I think, you're, I think you all are traveling very soon to go home. Please be safe. Thank you. Uh, and, and please, best wishes to everyone and congratulations on this amazing, amazing accomplishment. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your time. Thank you everybody for attending. Take care everyone. Take care now. Bye-bye.